Before we get started, a large thank you to a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my man. Max, Nick, Darren, Clavicus, Fabio, Javier, Angus, Mapenbla, Callum, Giandre, Tiago, Andreas, Basil, Vincent, and Thallon for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I genuinely appreciate your support so, so much. Hello guys, and today we're going to do some more work on our UI. We're going to make our middle panel section that will display our item's name and their item's icon. So we're going to really start the bones of this middle panel here now. And we're just going to do the name and the icon display. So starting out, let's go to the UI Windows game object under the player UI. Let's create a new empty. I'm going to call it middle panel. And I'm going to, you're going to want to make that the size of your whole UI. So you do that by going over to the uh, thing above anchors, holding alt, clicking this bottom right icon. It makes it the size of the game object it's under. And then we're going to make a, another empty game object, call that item stats window, do the same thing. So we're just basically going to copy the equipment screen window from the left panel. Um, and then we're going to paste it inside this new game object and remove all the components except for the background. I'm just doing this because I want it to be the same size and the same art as what we use for our left panel. So there's no real purpose to that besides doing this. I'm also going to rename it obviously to item stats window instead of equipment window. Uh, and everything except for the UI background after I move it over here to the middle, I am going to delete. So just to separate these two panels so we know they're different too, I'm going to quickly add a frame to them uh, by going to the UI background, creating a UI object image, and then holding Alt, making it the same size of the game object it is parented under, again, and then setting the sprite to a frame that I have. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other um, panel over here on the left. But before I do that, I'm actually going to go to my frame here because I don't think I have it cut. So I'm going to use the sprite editor and basically allow it so I can slice the image. So the borders stay the same size throughout. So I'll be right back, just gonna do that. There we go, I'm gonna set the pixels per unit to 25. And then I'm going to basically create a frame too for the left panel over here on the equipment window. Just going to make it under here and I'm gonna drop the weapons and armor under it um, as children game objects. And I'm going to set the frame again to frame two and set it to 25 pixels per unit. Okay, so. Now that's done, we're going to want to think to ourselves, what do we want this to display? And the first thing that comes to mind is the item's name that you have highlighted that you want to view. So let's make a text object and let's just call this, uh, let's call it item name text. And I'm being so specific here because when we have these variables that we want to call in the future and we're dragging them in the inspector, it's wise to name your game objects the same as you're going to name your variables. So if they ever become unplugged, it's easy to find them. You can even just search it then in the hierarchy. And if you have the name exactly the same as the variable, it'll be really easy to find. So I'm going to drag this up in the top left. I'm not going to focus too much on aesthetics. I'm just going to show you guys how to set it up. You can take the time to make it look pretty if you want. Uh, I'm going to make another empty game object down here. going to make it the same size of this panel. going to change that name to item name. And I'm just going to make it rough the size of what I want the title for the item's um, name to be. And I'm doing this because I'm going to add a frame to it, basically, just to separate it. And you don't need to do this. This, again, is just a little bit of preference just to give it some aesthetic. I'm not going to spend much time on it. The functionality is what I want to drive home here. Um, I can show you an example from Nephilim if you want that I've spent more time on when the video is concluded. Anyway, I'm going to come down here and create a, a UI image. Same thing as before. I'm going to hold Alt, make it the same size of the object it is parented under. I'm going to call it frame. And then you guessed it, I'm gonna go here and use my uh, frame image here and then set the pixels per unit multiplier to 25. Now I'm gonna play with that a little bit because I'm gonna drag the frame out so it's not really over the text. And that looks okay. So next I'm going to wanna have a space where I can have my items icon being displayed. So I'm just gonna change this frame here and withdraw it a little bit so we have some space to the right. And I'm going to come down here and create a UI uh, image is what we want. But first I'm gonna make an empty actually, and we're gonna call this item icon. And I'll do the same thing as I did before. I'm just gonna kind of roughly make the size that I want it to be. Um, in my solo project, I use a rule of, I believe like two by three, but I'm not gonna get specific with the width and height here because again, I just wanna show you how to set this up. If you wanna play around with that, uh, you can do that yourselves. So here in the item icon game object, I'm going to add a UI image icon under it. Um, and I'm going to call this background. This is so there's something behind the image I'm loading. It's not just clear. This is preference. I think it looks nice, especially when you have a semi-clear UI. And I'm going to add an image over this and call it frame. I'm going to hold alt, make it the same size again, and then apply my frame and apply the standard 25 uh, pixels per unit. And now lastly, under the frame, a new image. And I'm going to make that the same size by holding alt, and uh, this is just gonna be the actual item icon. So this is what changes depending on which uh, item you have selected. And because it's 
put as the most child object in the hierarchy. I'm also going to untick image so it's not loaded. It will be the thing that is displayed over all else. Okay, so now that we're good, let's go add a component to the item stats window game object right under the middle panel. Um, just checking here to make sure I got it set up here. Yes, on the equipment window, we have the equipment window UI. So on this one, we're going to call this uh, item stats window UI. And we're going to save all of our variables on this script that have anything to do with this middle panel, specifically on the item stats window. So in the future, that will be uh, weapon attack ratings, shield defense ratings, armor absorption ratings, stuff like that, all that good stuff. So my namespace, I'm going to put it up here, SG, and then I'm going to delete the start and update functionality. And I'm going to come down here and say using unity engine dot UI. And this just allows us to use the variable for text. So let's make a public text variable and let's call this item name text, which is exactly what I call the game object. And then down here, let's make a public, to think for a second here, yeah, image variable. And we'll call that item icon image is what I call that, I believe. So let's save that. And now these will reference the game objects we made in the scene in our UI um, for the title text and the item image icon. So let's make some pseudo code here, or rather a to-do list. We want to update the weapon item stats if we have a weapon highlighted. If we have an armor piece highlighted, we want to update our armor item stats. If we have a consumable item highlighted, we want to update our consumable item stats in the description, etc. And if we have a, let's say, ring item selected, when we make those in the future, we can update the ring item stats. So this all works similar. We're basically gonna give each kind of item type their own section of game objects that will be enabled or disabled and updated uh, depending on which item type we have highlighted in the equipment screen window. So if you're familiar with this, um, I'm just gonna make this function called update weapon item stats. We're gonna need to pass a weapon item. In Dark Souls, when you open up the equipment screen, if you have something highlighted, like say your sword, it will show your sword's physical attack, it's magic attack, it's, it's absorption, physical, magical, etc., etc. That's what we're setting up here. So we're gonna say item name text dot text equals weapon dot item name. And we're gonna say item icon image dot sprite equals weapon dot item icon. So this takes the text name from the weapon and the image and places them onto our variables. So let's actually come down here and drag in the item name text the item name text variable and the item icon image to the item icon image variable. And then down here on the UI manager, let's open that up and we're going to actually need to uh, create a variable for this um, item stats window UI. Now we're going to have to disable this, um, this menu. So let's make a public game object variable for it too called item stats window. And we're actually going to find where we disable our weapon inventory window. And right here, we want to disable this other window too. So our item stats window dot set active is false. This is so when we close a menu, we're closing this window as well, because this window is going to be opened when we open our equipment window. So we want to sync that with that basically. And wherever we're closing it, we want to close this too. So then let's just drag in the game object here for item stats window, just like we did before with our equipment stats or equipment screen window. And now when we close that, we'll close that window as well. Okay, so next over here again on the UI manager, we actually need to reference publicly so we can access it from other scripts, um, our item stats window UI script. So let's just call this item stats window UI. And then we're going to see, we, we could call this an awake, um, but I believe we're going to have the game object disabled until it's opened. So I, this, I don't think this is going to work. I can't recall. I believe I tried this with the um, equipment screen window and I think we have to actually make it a public variable and declare it or drag it into the inspector. Because if we use get component in children, the game object is disabled at runtime. I don't think it will work. So I'm just going to try this real quick first. And I'm going to move this player variable up top. Don't know why. Just feel the need to. And okay, back into the game here. Let's go and search up our weapon equipment slot UI script. Let's open that up. And then right here, we're going to say just simply where it says UI manager dot right hand slot 01 selected. We're going to say UI manager dot and we're going to reference our item stats window UI script. And then we're going to say dot update the weapon stats on the screen. And we're going to pass the weapon that's attached to this. So this is the script that is actually on the weapon slots on our UI equipment screen, like the left hand, right hand slots. This script is that we actually put this down here because this is gonna be called regardless. So you don't need to put it in the if statement, put it right at the bottom of the chain. And uh, this will pass the weapon accordingly. So let's actually uncheck that game object and hide it here now. And let's go over to the uh, UI windows and then go down here to the button where it says select equipment. That's when we go to our, our menu and we're opening up the equipment screen and add an on-click event and also open our item stats window. So basically when we open our left panel, we're opening our middle panel too when we use this menu. And that should be fine. 
And then down over here, um, I was correct. So this item stats when a UI, because the game object is not enabled at runtime, we have to actually drag it in the inspector. So let's do that. I'm just gonna delete the variable call from awake. Gonna go to the player UI and right here, item stats when a UI. Just come down here and drag that in. Whoops, wrong game object. Drag that in like that. And we're good to go. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, there's a couple things we have to do over here. Go back to the item stats when UI script and here on the update weapon item stats, we forgot to do a couple things. So first we're gonna say, or I should say, I forgot to do a couple things. We're gonna say if weapon dot item icon uh, image does not equal null, cause we wanna check, maybe you forgot to put an image on your weapon when you created it and then we're not gonna pass it. Uh, if it does not equal null, we're gonna, we're gonna pass it rather. And we're also gonna say item icon image dot game object that set active is true, just in case it's turned off. And then we're gonna say else and then we're gonna say the item icon image equals null. And then we're gonna say item icon image at game object that set active equals false. Okay, so let me save that. Good to go. We're clearing it. I'm just gonna test this. Come down here to the left panel. And then come down here to the right hand slot, one, two, three, and four. And I forgot to do this. We need to make a basically a an event here, an event trigger. And we're not actually ever updating it. Uh, when we have the event or the slot selected. So we're gonna make an event trigger for on pointer enter and, and select. And all this does is basically when we hover our mouse over or select this equipment slot, we want to do some logic because right now it only happens when we're on clicking it. We don't want that. We want to do it when we're actually hovering over it as well. So add the event trigger for on pointer enter and on select. And what we want to do is just drag in the appropriate slot here. So for example, on right hand slot 01, we're gonna drag in the game object right hand slot 01. We're gonna reference our script weapon equipment slot UI and we're gonna say select this slot, that's it. And do that again for the select, so on point render and select, and do that for each weapon slot, uh, equipment slot here. And make sure you're not accidentally dragging in the left hand slot, for example, on the right hand slot because that would give you some uh, strange logic. So we're doing this because right now, like I said, it only updates the UI manager uh, to tell us which slot is being used if we click it. And that's no good for being on the equipment screen because as you know, when we click it, it then closes out that screen and opens up our inventory. What we wanna do right now is select the slot and then update the middle panel to display the selected slots item name and item icon. So we're gonna say UI manager reset all selected slots here at the top. That way we can't have more than one slot selected at one time. Okay, so now back over here, we also have to say, because I forgot I unchecked the uh, the image component when we made this first, I, I hit it. So we're gonna do a couple things here. We're, first, we're gonna also make sure the weapon's on null because that can be a possibility to use. So we're gonna say if weapon dot item name does not equal null, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say then the item name text equals the weapon's item name. Otherwise, if it is null, you can say one of two things. You can say uh, item dot text equals string dot empty or you can also just use two quotation marks to indicate an empty space like this. Both work. So I'm just gonna use this. And then I'm going to actually come here and make one last if statement to check if the weapon itself is null. And I'm gonna say if the weapon is not null, then we're gonna put all this logic in there and do this just in case, because if it is null, it will throw you an error and could potentially break something. It should never be null, but just in case. Then we'll say else, and we're just gonna make the item name text equal nothing and we're gonna disable the game object of the item image icon, and we're gonna set the sprite to null, and we're gonna save that. And I'm gonna go over here now and try this out. So I'm gonna go here to the equipment or the uh, equipment screen, and okay, it goes to null, that's perfect. And it changes the name to bow, but why is it not giving me the image of the bow? Okay, let me see what, I, oh, I, I just said to do that and I forgot to do that. So yeah, uh, the image icon component itself is actually turned off. I started it off that way, because if not, we'd see a white square. So you can use game object set active, um, or you can use the uh, item icon image dot enabled equals true. You, or you can use both, it doesn't matter. I'll just put both here to show you. But either way, you want to turn it off in one way or another when there's no image. Otherwise, you'll just have a white square there. So both of these are fine. I will keep both here. You can use whichever one you want and you can keep two of them there, but they will essentially do the same thing in this situation. So make sure you're turning it to false down there, if there's nothing there, and if there's something there, it turns to true. Now if I press the equipment screen here and I've lightened the background, you can see it displays my sword. If I go to an empty slot and nothing pops up, if I go to my sword, there's my sword. There you go, guys. So this is just the bones of what we're gonna do. In the next video, we're gonna get really deep into this. We're gonna add things like the attack rating, the damage absorption, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, we can even add little spaces for things in the future like wait. But if you know how to do one thing here, you can kind of go have some fun and try to put this stuff in yourself. In fact, I encourage you to go and try to implement this stuff on your own now. 
And I'm just gonna really go over the next video how we can separate loading different uh, sections in depending on which item type you have highlighted. For example, you're not gonna have an attack rating on an armor piece, but you're gonna have it on a sword. So we're gonna change out what components load in the middle screen depending on what kind of item type you have selected. I hope that's clear. So if you guys made this far, be sure to drop a like because it does genuinely help out the series so much, guys. And a large thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys I can keep doing this. I appreciate you all so, so much. I will see you in the next one, guys. Talk soon.